boss, sir. Real easy, right? No, 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 no. No, no, no. Right, we're going to talk about tension and release. We're also going to talk about blue bossa. And we're also going to talk about Latin playing. So we've got three backing tracks. All three of the tracks are available on my Bandcamp. Links in the description as usual. Uh, please do enjoy this lesson. Share it if you, if you like it. And go and check out my Bandcamp. There's loads of original backing tracks played by lots of, um, lots of really interesting people. Um, go and check them out and support your local functional alcoholic father of two. Um, so, without further ado, I'm going to talk about Rembrandt's Sea of Galilee and how it relates to Blue, Blue Bossa and 251. So let's have a look straight away. So here we are. This is one of the most wonderful paintings imaginable. Um, it has an almost perfect balance point. And I'm going to explain a little bit about 251's and the idea of tension release. Uh, so this is Blue Bossa via Rembrandt. Okay, so right at the start we have the two. So this is the introduction and we have the five. This is the kind of area of tension and chromaticism and then we have the one. Okay, so two, five, one. Easy, right? Okay, so let's just go through that in a bit more detail. So my idea of 251s is this kind of journey. So you've got a beginning, a middle, and an end. And during the middle, you've got development, and you've got tension, you've got chromaticism in a musical sense, in uh, the sense of this wonderful, wonderful painting. We've got all of this tension, all of this conflict, all of this kind of forward motion resistance, all of this kind of stuff. Um, and then right at the end, we've got this nice release, relaxation, calm, balance. So. The balance point, if you squint your eyes on this picture, the real balance point is absolutely dead center. And your eye is brought through all the way through all of this boom, and then and it's released the other side. And you've got this lovely kind of context in the middle, all this idea of things flowing and through the image, this wonderful motion all the way through. Um, now when we're approaching a two five one, two five one, I like to think of it in these sorts of terms. Um, so you have the introduction of an, of an idea, and harmonic, harmonically speaking. <laughs> Excuse me, I've got my pick. I've got my pick stuck in there, so that's why it was out of tune. Sorry about that. That's a nice little bit of tension in itself. So, D minor, G7, G7 altered, C minor, okay, related to this picture. D minor 7, G7, and C minor over the end there, okay. Okay. Introduction of the idea. Introduction, tension, resolution. Okay, so there we are, Blue Bossa via Rembrandt's Sea of Galilee. Um, if you haven't checked this image out, please do absorb yourself in it. It has unbelievable layers of complexity. Um, the use of light is incredible, and the way that um, it's sort of a bit abstract, I do realize that. Um, but when we're talking about these sorts of things, there are analogous. Uh, that is to say, um, you can draw an analogy to things like this. Lovely, lovely pieces of art, um, motion, dance, all of that kind of stuff. Anything that, that, that sort of has displaced balance. Um, so you have introduction, um, development, tension, and then resolution. Okay. So in this piece, Blue Boss, there's lots of that sort of thing. Okay. And the way that we can apply melodic ideas... Um, and apply our improvisation um, correctly, I feel, is, is introducing these ideas of... You know, this is when people talk about phrasing, and phrases that kind of work, phrases that don't work, um, and the kind of myriad of, of stuff in between, is where you, you, you land on areas where you're kind of introducing ideas, creating tension, and then really releasing the tension and resolving things in, 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 a, in a kind of balanced way. So that's what we're aiming to do with it, with two five ones and the kind of cadences in general, really. Any time that you have, you're standing on the edge of a cliff and and then it res 
there's a resolution there as well. So you kind of have the introduction, you have the development and tension and the resolution. How many more times am I going to say that during this tutorial? Let's, uh, let's find out. So let's dive in and have a look at the chart to begin with and we'll see what we're dealing with. So C minor harmony into F minor. That's basically the same thing. That's fairly diatonic. You can stick around a C minor harmony or an E flat major if you want. This is a bit of on the fly harmonic analysis. And you've got this 251 here. Um, relate that back to what I just talked about. And then you've got another 251 here. Um, again, relate that to what I talked about. This is the kind of um, the uh, kind of introduction of the idea, the development and tension, and then the release. Woo! Boom. Okay. So, and then we've got the same thing again at the end. No idea why it's drawing these things. Let me let me try that again. Draw a nice thing. There we are. Look at that. Those nice little brackets. And then we've got the two five one at the end here. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. So. You've got the establishment of a C minor harmony. Uh, never mind the F, major, F minor seven; it's just the same. You can you can explore that if you want, but it's basically fairly diatonic that first bit. And then we're into this series of um, of two five one. So let's play this through with the slower version of the backing track. Um, like I said, all of these all of these uh, tracks are available via my Bandcamp. Sorry about the little noise in the background, by the way. It's incredibly cold up here, um, as you'll see now. I've got a heater on here to keep me from freezing. So there we are. So let's play with this backing track at the slower speed and we'll talk a little bit about some approaches and ideas. We've tried to introduce the piece with some nice, even, concise melodic ideas. We're ex we're kind of exploring very kind of um, um, sort of sh in a shallow sense. We're exploring the tension in the two five ones. We're not going full chromatic um, in 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 at this part at this part of the solo. So so what we're going to do now is we're going to have a look at ways that we can develop those ideas. And um, what we're doing is effectively establishing the harmony, establishing the C minor harmony. And then we're kind of we're, we're sort of feeling our way through that first two five one. We're setting um, we're kind of calibrating the listener, if you like. It's a really good idea. Effectively, the analogy I like to use is is like you come into a room and you grab everyone's attention. And you introduce yourself. You say, "My name's such and such. I'm here because of this. These are the ideas I want to talk about." And then you get into the main content and thrust of what you want to say. Okay? You don't just waltz into a room and start streaming consciousness at everyone because no one wants to listen and they'll just ignore you, okay? So I like to think about it in the same sort of terms with a solo as well. So you arrive in a room, you get someone's, you get someone's attention with a nice concise idea. So everyone kind of turns around and goes, oh, that's a nice interest. I can, I can hear what is, that's what's going on there. Oh, there's another idea. Okay, now I'm listening, now I'm focused. So they go from not focusing you on you at all to focusing on you 10%, 20%, 50%, and, and then they're fully invested in your solo, okay? So this is what we're trying to do when we start solos off. So in a pragmatic way, we can use very short phrases, three, four seconds long, allow them time to breathe, like we spoke about in, in last week's lesson, um, and then develop the idea slowly. Okay, rather than hitting the ground at 100 miles an hour and dropping every um, every chop that you have on at your disposal in that first 30 seconds, um, we're looking at introducing ideas slowly. Okay. Uh, what that does is it sets the stage. It builds your foundation, if you like. I'm full of analogies today. Uh, it builds your your foundations and allows you to build first floor, second floor, so on and so forth. And then you have a house. So this is a Latin feel and a bossa nova. Okay, this is this is the slowest version of the backing track. Okay, so there's lots of content there to listen to. Um, you got the clave. So that would 
be a great starting point. You've got this bass line that's quite a legato bass line, excuse me. So all of this, all of this while, there's a bit of a myth, okay, when it comes to playing over standards that you have to focus on the changes and use them as your content to play over solely. Not true. You've got the melody, you've got the rhythm, you've got the bass line, and you've got the harmony on the bottom of that. So you've got all of that stuff. Um, now, how how you how you sort of what you choose to pick up on um, is entirely up to you. So it's got very bright in here all of a sudden. Okay. to kind of leave those phrases and really be lyrical with your phrasing okay this is not like a bebop tune Actually, the pentatonic is quite, when you're over minor harmonies, um, it's quite a useful little device, actually. Um, without resorting to full-on uh, blues licks, you can actually use the pentatonic really wisely to finish phrases off, because it's a nice way of providing that release and resolution that we talked about. Um, going back to that Rembrandt picture, that's that kind of way that we can get that nice resolution at the end, is to use a, a simple kind of pentatonic idea. <laughs> Simple pentatonic, pentatonic idea, not necessarily a not necessarily a blues pentatonic idea, more of a square shaped pentatonic, and by that I mean you've got this kind of if you imagine a line across, across, and like an literally like a square shape. So kind of visualize that on the fretboard. practice it would be really a good idea to kind of get used to these kind of sh all of those all of those kind of classic uh, wood sheddy kind of ideas okay so with your practice um, your practice routine never any more than five minutes okay I'm gonna really annoy some people here um, because I'm going to throw something out there and you're going to get fully triggered, uh, some people, uh, because I'm going to say that you don't need to practice scales and arpeggios more than five minutes every day. And I'm, I'm going to explain why. Firstly, your brain won't take it in. Uh, secondly, 
the thing that you're really working in, working on when you're, you're exploring this idea of playing things for five minutes is your focus. Five minutes of incredibly highly focused practice every day will absolutely exhaust you, okay? And it will have a huge impact on your learning and it's something that will kind of have a big accumulative effect if you're doing it regularly. Practicing is very important. Um, it, how you practice is very important. It's very important to practice little and often. Okay, practicing for hours and hours and hours and hours every day is not a good idea. Categorically, not a good idea. Uh, anyone who disagrees with me, I'll fight you. Okay, um, I, I see so many people and so many players um, absolutely jaded and hammering, hammering themselves into the ground simply because they have this idea that they uh, have to be practicing seven, eight hours a day. Now, play for six or seven or eight hours a day by all means. Okay. If, you're, if you find yourself in a situation where you, you, you've done your practice and you want to keep playing all day, great, superb. Okay? You always want to be fresh, always want to be hungry, always want to be full of ideas. Okay? Always, when you pick up the guitar, you want to be absolutely gagging to play. Okay? That's the key. So over-practicing is like kryptonite to, uh, to, to, to musicality, in my opinion. Okay? So your practice regime should consist of the following. Five minutes scales and arpeggios. Five minutes chord vocabulary. Five minutes picking up an articulation. And five minutes sight reading. Okay? Those are the incredibly boring things that uh, we all kind of try and hide from all the time. Okay? But if you stick to five minutes a day on each of those things, you'll never get bored of them. Okay? Trust me. And if you're practicing properly, you'll be able to fit an unbelievably focused amount of information into that time. Okay? So this is what I recommend. Um, now, obviously, there's going to be uh, there's going to be a lot of resistance to that. I realise that. I don't give a shit. Uh, I couldn't give a monkey's. Um, it's just my opinion, but I trust me. I think it works. I think it's. I think it's. I think the theory is sound. You don't really learn anything beyond that. You're just hammering yourself into the ground. Okay, we're playing music at the end of the day. That's what's really important. Okay, so I would suggest you do five minutes on each of those things. Be incredibly focused. Um, and efficient in that five minutes. I'm not talking about kind of noodling away for five minutes. I'm talking about very intense, very focused practice during those five minutes. The upshot and the side effect of that is it will improve your levels of focus when you play as well. Anything that improves your intensity and focus when you're playing is a good thing. Practice makes permanent. Practice doesn't make perfect. Okay? The things you do will become permanent. The things you do will become your habit. Okay? Taxi drivers practice driving badly all day. Okay? They're experts at driving badly. All right? They drive for eight or nine hours a day. If practice makes perfect, they'd be the best drivers in the world. They're not. They're the worst drivers in the world. We all know that. Okay? So uh, practice makes permanent. Whatever you practice, that will become your habit. And that will become what's your reality and you know, the kind of thing that you're, you're, you're doing from that point onwards. Okay? Practice well. Practice efficiently. Uh, practice good things, not bad things. Okay, right. Let's go on to the medium uh, speed backing track, and I'll talk about this idea. We're going to talk a bit about Latin feel as, as well. We're concentrating on the clave. This mid, this mid um, medium. That was the word I was looking for. The medium tempo uh, backing track here is more of a samba feel, um, and we're going to be concentrating on this thing called partido alto, which is a kind of a samba pattern. And I'll play it along uh, with the track, and we'll. Um, We'll discuss that. So partido alto. See, those are the accents, okay? And that's the kind of emphasis in your mind. So that's the emphasis. 
and that's the way that you can slot in with the rhythm section, okay? So Latin, uh, Cuban and, and Brazilian music is very hierarchical in the way that the, the rhythms slot together. You know, it's the bass, it's like a surdu pattern, if you, if you don't know what a surdu is, Google surdu drum. So everything slots around that. You've got this ganza pattern. On the top as well. And you've got the timbal kind of pattern. So you've got this kind of nice layering of uh, percussive parts there as well. So your job is to kind of fit in with that, really, so... some of the gears that I like to go through and some of the approaches that I like to take. You've got the Partido Alto, you've got the Ganza, the nice papery hi-hat pattern, you've got the Timbal, which sort of defines the samba feel on the snare drum with the ghost notes, and you've got that nice big boomy surdu drum pattern as well, um, which is echoed in the bass. My point with all of this is that you've got lots of content there to use apart from the actual changes. If you focus too much on the changes, you'll find yourself getting yourself in a bit of a straitjacket with core scale relationships and all of that kind of stuff and that's incredibly boring. So what we'd like to do to encourage flow, to encourage more of a kind of natural improvisation, use what's around you, take more of a 360 view. Use the melody, pay specific attention to the lengths of the phrases in the melody, the gaps in between, the rests, how those melodies are structured. Use that as your inspiration and, um, and content for for building on as part of your improvisation as well as the harmony as well okay so rhythm harmony melody okay so we're going to move on now to the faster tempo backing all of these backings once again they're available over on my band camp so head on head on over there support your local functional alcoholic father of two uh, by spending one pound uh, on one of these backings they're all played by real musician um, and I've worked a lot, of, uh, I've worked a lot on the feels and getting the the, the Latin feel and the swing feels um, re really nice and easy to play along with. You'll see that there's three other whole albums worth of backings over there. So do take a look if you like the sound of what you you find, and uh, do feel free to download them. Um, so we're going to focus on the faster one of the backings now. So because this is more of a festival samba speed. Um, there's probably slightly less content that we're going to look, so the psychologists would describe this as chunking up, so you're kind of reducing the amount of content that your brain's focusing on, okay, so you don't have so many things to think about, okay. So we're going to focus on nice melodic flow here and interspersing and oscillating between that and rhythmic anticipation and syncopation. So let's have a play and see what comes out. 
So you've got this kind of nice uh, way that you can drop in and out of the syncopations. You can use flow flowing melodies and then pull into the syncopations as well. We've got the, the major, the relative major triads that you can use there. Over the, over the C minor, you've got this kind of like this kind of natural nice natural modal approach with the major six. things that you can pull in and out of to kind of guide the listener but um, with this sort of speed it's really important to sort of fall back onto that clave or partido alto kind of emphasis <laughs> Okay, so plenty to be getting on with. Okay, you've got three speeds there. You've got all three backing tracks that are available to download. Uh, get stuck into them. Let me know what you think in the comments. Um, thanks very much for all your wonderful feedback on the last video. Uh, it's very much appreciated. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please do so. Um, hit the notifications bell, and every week on a Tuesday, there'll be a new lesson. Um, with a bit of luck, we'll see, hopefully. <laughs> um, so. So thanks very much and we'll see you next time. Yeah.